Yet another new year, 2025. In today's video, I will be providing a step-by-step -step guide or breakdown with how to get started in cybersecurity in 2025. Now, this video is very similar to issues I've done in the past where it's get started in cybersecurity, enter your year. And this is almost a word-for-word -word copy based off of last year's video. There are a few changes to this year's issue, specifically navigating through the hype and buzz, but continuing to stay updated with AI and LLMs, as well as a new free platform that I am launching to help you with hands-on security practice starting day one while building a security portfolio. Now, this video is divided into two sections, the technical content, and then some career-based anecdotes or advice. So starting out with the technical content in step one, which is reading the security news, something that you can do starting today. Start with reading, read the security news, read your fan favorite books, go out and listen to some podcasts. Really reading the security news and books familiarizes yourself with the fundamental concepts of security and strategies. You can learn a lot from just reading, consuming general cybersecurity resources. Now, when you don't understand a phrase, a tool, a concept, look it up. Uh, use your LLM or Google or whatever of choice and just take notes with what you're learning. Defining different acronyms, attacks, defenses, tools, and overall strategies. I recommend just building out a little notebook of concepts that you're learning. Dedicate at least 15 minutes a day to just reading the security news, maybe a book, listening to a podcast while you're out. And it's uh, really very beneficial, something that is commonly overlooked. Two is starting with the fundamentals of IT. I have said it so many times by now, but really learn the basics of computer hardware, software, operating systems, and networking. You need to know the underlying concepts, the foundational principles such as networking in order to secure a network. And that applies to all areas of IT fundamentals. Now you can learn the fundamentals in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of good e-learning platforms out there. I have always recommended just going through the CompTIA A+, Network+, Plus, Security+, Plus Exam Objectives, and just learning the basics. These are freely available PDF guides that provide a decent roadmap for the concepts to learn for IT, networking, and security respectively. So I'll leave those in the link in the description below, but you can go out and learn the fundamentals anywhere. YouTube crash courses are also a great place to look into. Three is the computer networking deep dive. So computer networking is the backbone of what power is what you're seeing here today, the internet. And securing this infrastructure is paramount to protecting against security attacks. Now, learning the basics of networking, including the hardware associated, the TCP IP and OSI model, networking architecture concepts such as segmentation, uh, subnetting, network protocols, network security. These are all fundamental properties of IT and they're very important. And that's why I have a dedicated section to this. Formalize yourself with those concepts in the exam objectives, create notes, and even create little home labs if you can. More on this in a few moments. Number four, basics of programming and scripting. Choose any popular, free, user-friendly programming language. Typically, I recommend Python. Starting with Python, you can move into additional language such as Bash, PowerShell, which are scripting languages, or uh, Go, for example. Programming, and more so scripting, is used across a wide array of security functions, anywhere from connecting different systems with APIs to automating a little small task. So I do recommend uh, looking into scripting languages. Now, to learn scripting languages, I recommend any free crash course on YouTube. I mean, that really at this point, you don't need to go out and pay for content when it comes to learning a programming language. Uh, so that's what I recommend. There, I'll leave a couple of crash courses in the description below, ones that I think are good. Five is operating system basics. So learn how to navigate the basics and the fundamental properties of Microsoft Windows, Mac OS, Linux operating systems. This includes navigating the respective command lines or terminal, common shell commands, the basics of OS architecture, the kernel, user space, uh, system calls, basic Windows and Linux set up on virtual machines, and then you just have the file process memory management components. Now, Linux specifically is a sizable component of backend architecture that we see powering servers today. Understanding the basics of Linux and its architecture are going to be important for you to familiarize yourself with 
how the back end works and how it differs from say a traditional Windows uh, environment. Microsoft Windows powers a large majority of business environments, including their workstation fleets and their internal business networking via Windows Server. Understanding common techniques and tactics used to attack and defend Windows environments, as well as tools at your disposal for detection and prevention, will help you gain a holistic perspective of end user workstation fleets and the operating system environment or ecosystem. Six is the security basics or security foundations. So as you can see, a lot of prerequisites are what I would recommend learning knowledge, fundamental concepts before actually getting into security itself, learning the basics of security, hardware strategies, common attacks, defenses, and tools. This is going to be important. I recommend using the CompTIA security plus exam objectives as a template for learning the security basics, you know, formalize yourself with the following concepts listed in the exam guide and use your respective tooling to go out and just learn about them. Take a look into the MITRE attack framework and defend matrix for a comprehensive list of attack techniques and tactics, as well as the respective defenses in the defend matrix. This is a good place to start. Seven is cloud and virtualization. There's no doubt that, you know, everything's moving to the cloud. Well, at least in a hybrid way, uh, learning the basics of the three major cloud providers, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud product GCP and the respective security architecture can be quite beneficial to you. The cloud ultimately powers virtualization. You're using someone else's underlying hardware. Virtualization can help with a wide array of security functions, including malware sandboxing, deploying honeypots, building temporary environments, scaling out your infrastructure. There's a lot of things. So I recommend familiarizing yourself at least with the basics of the cloud. Use any of the respective major cloud provider certifications. Pick one, it doesn't really matter. I recommend sticking to the three. And you can look at the entry level certification exam objectives as a good starting point. And if you so choose, pursue the certification in whichever cloud provider you choose. I chose Amazon Web Services, continue to do that today, but I hope to continue to adventure into Azure and GCP as well. And finally, eight is AI and its continued developments. All right, I realize there's a lot of uh, hype around AI and navigating the AI hype train can be difficult. Uh, there's the fidelity of data and hallucinations concerns, as well as a whole bunch of other concerns with AI. My recommendation is to stay relatively updated with AI and its new developments. Think about areas and problem spaces where perhaps an LLM or a component of AI may help augment your workflow, whether that's in your learning process, your daily job, even you as a student, it doesn't really matter. This is a challenge that I am really focusing on in 2025. It's a lot of hype, but it's true. It's still going to be staying around. There's a couple of newsletters I'll recommend in the description below just to stay updated. I'm not sponsored by any means. Now, one thing I've realized in my studies and over the course of you know, the last five years is that it's not only about hands-on practice and security, but it's also about building a portfolio while you're doing it to something that you can showcase and point to, to colleagues, friends, and potentially employers. So I'm attempting to address this problem, building practical experience from day one while building a portfolio. So I'm releasing a free course here on this YouTube channel in 2025, as well as the same course and a self-hosted platform that you can sign up for. Uh, stay tuned for the video course and the respective guides and everything that's going to come with it. It will be completely free for you to download. And so I recommend, you know, I don't know, subscribing. I know it's cringy, but subscribe if you want something like that. From a career perspective, lots of generic advice that one can navigate through. Overall, I recommend a few of these steps. First is develop a plan and stick to it, as well as develop respective documentation. As you begin your career, it's easy to get lost in various different rabbit holes and silos. And that's okay if you're passionate about those industries or wherever you're at. But I do recommend outlining a plan of what you're going to do. Stick to that plan. 
for a consistent period of time. It's going to help you uh, at least find measurable progress, something that you're actually working towards, building momentum. And I recommend breaking it down into very segmented approaches. So for example, reading security news 15 minutes a day, that can be just a goal in and of itself. It doesn't have to be eight hours of study every single day. And take extensive notes while you're doing it so you can reference back to when you forget it. Second is project-based approach. Uh, CTF, cybersecurity home labs, it can be used to build a portfolio, something that you can add to your resume, you know, mention during potential interviews. As I mentioned, there's a platform that I'm building that's gonna help with that. But I do recommend project-based approach, lots of free content or project ideas out there. Third is formal qualifications. A formal university degree, some cybersecurity certifications can be useful for your overall learning in addition to making you a more reputable, suitable candidate while you're going through the interview process. A general technology, computer science, cybersecurity degree, as well as just the main cybersecurity certifications, I would stick to those and center your kind of your portfolio around maybe a formal qualification. It's typically just a check mark, but it's something that I do recommend. And fourth is your network, your community network. So the InfoSec community, it's a great community. There's a lot of unique individuals that are happy to chat and help. Overall, join various different clubs, meetups, conferences, Discord servers, it doesn't really matter start chatting online. Overall, your network matters way more than some AI application website thing. I hope this video can be resourceful for you as you continue to grow and learn into your journey in cybersecurity 2025. I'm wishing you a warm felt regards for this new year. I'm hoping for a great start of the year and all resources, as I've mentioned, will be in the link in the description below. So thanks for watching and you know what it is. Until next time. Have a good day.